Good morning, my name is Barbara Lerman. I was president of the bar from 2000 to 2003. Today is September 4th, 2021, a very long time since then. And I am here with my great friend, Susan Kettner, who was the president from 1998 to 2000. Susan, is it true that you were the first woman president of the new Michelle Bar? That would be correct, Barbara. I, I thought so. Yes. I was, um, you know, as you said, my service be began in 1998 and ended in, in 2000. But just like you, I have, um, I've been very active in the Bar Association from the early 1990s when I moved back to New Rochelle. Uh, to join practice with my father. Um, I moved back from the city and I joined the Bar Association because I really wanted to meet other lawyers. And it's really just been such a positive experience. Um, so I have served every single office uh, as director, as treasurer, as secretary, as vice president under Milton M. Krebel. Um, yes. So I. Like you, Barbara, I met many friends in the association throughout the years. And it's been an extremely rewarding experience on so many different levels. You grew up here in New Rochelle. You're kind of a New Rochellean, uh, not quite native, but almost native. And um, I want to ask you about your dad and your grandfather. And uh, in that regard, if you could just hold it up and with, they don't have to see everything carefully, but that was a meeting of the New Rochelle Bar in 19, what? Uh, this is actually, um, it's really very interesting. It's a group of uh, New Rochelle leaders that had gathered together on the occasion of the Good Fellowship Dinner to George E. Flandreau on June 9th, uh, 1923. And this was in Keene's Chop House in, in New York City. It's, all male, all with like deer antlers and other things on the wall. It, and yes, uh, my grandfather and many of these men had just returned from uh, the European theater that most of those men fought in World War I, and they returned to their, to their hometown communities. I am probably the only member <laughs> that has the distinction of having one of my ancestors also served as president of the Bar Association, and that would be my, my grandfather served as uh, president of the Nourishell Bar Association and was very, very active. My father served as vice president of the association um, toward the middle to late 1960s. And they were, they were both quite involved in the community. Both were veterans, as I mentioned, my grandfather fought in World War, World War I, and my father, uh, what World War II, and when they returned from those wars, uh, they went to law school and they became attorneys. And you know, my grandfather had a rather large firm at one point in time, and he was an original tenant of the Pershing Square Building, uh, also known as the K Building or the Schiff Building. And I have very early memories of visiting um, them at at their office and. Uh, <clears throat> At the time, because there was the technology was so primitive. I mean, when you would go into what is now the K building, it was operated manually. There was an elevator operator who operated the elevator, and I would go to to their office. And at the time, they had a huge office. I believe it was on the tenth floor. And at one point, I had the the original plans for that office. Um, there were several offices, larger offices for the attorneys. There was an office manager and supply closets that we could take supplies for school. <laughs> Everybody was really nice to us because we were the, the children of, you know, and the grandchildren of, of the lawyers in the firm. It was just great and I loved to go and then many years later and, you know, when, even though I didn't go to school in Rochelle, I actually grew, I was born here but I grew up in Mamarian, but the practice of law was my family's business from the end of World War I through the time that I closed down my office at the end of uh, 2010, 
after I was elected a city court judge. Uh, and were you, um, do I recall correctly that you were the first woman elected city court judge in the history of New Rochelle? I, yes, that's correct. I was the first, I was the first woman who was elected uh, as a full-time city court judge. As you know, um, that there are currently three judges now serving uh, Judges Rice, that we Jared Rice, Judge Costa, and Judge Eileen Sarner McCarthy. When I joined the bench, uh, the other woman serving in the court was Judge Gail Rice. I was so very happy to be able to serve with Gail. We, Gail was a member of the Board of Directors for several years, and I remember those meetings really very well, especially the ones in my office when we ordered pizza over the objections of some of the directors. And we had, um, there was really a lot of great chemistry. We did a lot of things together. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, now on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. All right. We were together that we morning. Were to, we were together that morning. I want to talk a little bit about that, Warren, if you'll just indulge us. We were at an 8 a.m. CLE at uh, 123 Main Street, which was the headquarters of Barclays Bank, or it might have been then known as the Bank of New York. And um, at that time, uh, Tony Scarpino, who was recently elected as uh, Westchester County surrogate, he uh, succeeded Al Emanuele. Now, we have photographs of Al someplace here. We have so many photographs, it's like ridiculous. But um, so there was a, a rather small group of attorneys who assembled, and we were in the midst of the meeting. And Tony Scarpino, now it's not, it's not surrogate, it's Tony Scarpino. We, we came to know Tony very well. Uh, he went on to become a district attorney, and now he's back in private practice. But during those years, if you remember, he started off every year being the first guest speaker uh, in January for the New Rochelle Bar. And that went on, and I believe now Brandon Saul uh, does the same thing. So that's how far back that's you go. That is correct. And it was your influence that first had Tony come here, because I know if I do a deep dive into these photographs, which are probably upstairs, I have photographs of those meetings when, you know, when Tony Scarpino first started coming. But he did establish um, he did establish that tradition. Mm -hmm. But on 9-11, I will never forget it, Tony had just got up to walk over to the courthouse because he always started promptly at 9.30 on the cal his calendar calls. And he had left, and I believe he was, it was Charlie and either Rob DeBella, I'm not sure, or, or Joe Asetta that were left and they were taking questions when all of a sudden one of the bank people came in, they said, the World Trade Center has been struck by a plane. Now, I was sitting right next to Milton Kreppel, uh, who was also a past president. Milton turned to me. He said, you know, I wonder what happened. And we just thought sort it of was some kind of, you know, minor plane it's accident. Could be an accident. Except we thought it was like one of these small crop duster type planes or little Piper planes, Piper Apache or something like that, and then somebody came in again and said "There's the other tower has been hit, and it, people were just freaking out, and we knew that now this was not an accident. And then shortly thereafter, and people's cell phones started going off, mm -hmm. and then I remember they said that the Pentagon has been attacked. Now, we did not have smartphones then, we had cell phones, That's we had true. dumb phones, so you couldn't just like buzz on to the New York Times or to whatever flavor news you like to listen to now, the news came through more quickly, but we didn't have access to it through our phones. People were finding out there was one woman who was a, a prominent trust and estates lawyer. Her first name was Karen. I forget her last name, but I had some business with the firm. She got a call. Her husband was involved in that. And he did survive, but he wound up being hospitalized for months mm -hmm. and being rehabilitated. But the, the meeting broke up, and I will never forget, I was walking out the door, and somebody had just, it was such primitive, primitive, primitive technology, they had just ripped off a page from a fax machine 
they held it up and you could see the plane crashing in to the World Trade Center. Mm. It was like shocking and, and it was just... It was terrifying. It was really terrifying. I walked out into the street and I took local roads home and I remember I turned on the radio and I heard on the Fordham radio station WFUV, they said, they announced the second tower had fallen. And that's when I pulled over, I stopped my car, I just couldn't drive any further. I had to really collect myself. I started crying and, you know, I called my office and I was really in a state. So after that, we went back to the office. We, we met as a group somehow later that night, I know, Eileen Sandra McCarthy, who's now Judge Sandra McCarthy, uh, contacted then Mayor Idoni, and mm. we all gathered at City Hall, uh, and the New Rochelle people did at least, uh, and he addressed those who were present, and he talked about what had happened. It was just, it was just so shocking. And we, as an association, we asked Tim, Tim, what can we do? What can we do as a board? Yes. And we were lucky to find out that as it happened, Nourishell was not as hard hit as other communities. Uh, you know, communities in New Jersey, uh, I know right. Marshmont had a number of fatalities, the people that worked in, you know, in the financial sector, but we were spared. However, our Nourishell Police Department and I believe some of the fire department uh, personnel did go down and they worked the pile. And uh, I found this out later through, through Gail Rice, who said that um, they really did a lot of work um, at the work, yes. Yeah. And you know, a couple of them have died from uh, injuries related to that rescue work and recovery work that followed. But it was such a...